We're on our way. I'm nervous going down this here causeway. We are actually gonna go into Cedar Point. I'm very excited. It's been far too long. And by this rate, it might actually be a manageable day. Let's get inside. back at Cedar Point for the first time in four years. As said in my little brief intro, yeah, it was a real struggle getting in this park last time, and I'm happy, I'm so happy that I'm back. And you might have wondered, oh my God, am I even gonna get to the park this season? But today and tomorrow we have a two-day visit. It's kind of more a full day split into two as we do the haunt event, and then we do a little bit of a early open time tomorrow in some of the rides and focus on some memories of the park from over the years next time. Uh, so for tonight, yes, it is early on in the haunt season, so we're gonna cover that in this particular vlog. Very excited to get on some of my favorite rides as well. It being earlier in the season and a Thursday today, it looks like it won't be too busy in the park as well. Or here's hoping, we got five scare mazes to hopefully get through and a whole bunch of legendary rides, of course, as Gatekeeper rattles behind me to get on. All right, here it is. Cedar Point, finally a return. Since the beginning of the channel, here we go. It's haunt time, 2022. Excitingly, the 150th anniversary celebration still here at Cedar Point. This is a park that you need a pretty good plan for. Uh, and I was trying to figure that out based on the ride availability for this particular event. I'll see you in a second. I might even actually try to get to see this show tomorrow because I've never been. In addition to that, there is development for the new project that opens next year, including a wild mouse from Zamperla. But we're not going to mess around because when you do come to this park, there's one ride that you kind of have to prioritize, which is why we're going all the way to the back of the park to start. It's not too busy, so I'm hoping maybe, fingers crossed, that during this stay I get at least three rides on Steel Vengeance so I can give a proper assessment. I'm gonna hit 300 credits on this particular trip. In fact, I hit it tomorrow with a pretty big ride that I've been waiting to get on for some time. So I'll be able to reevaluate Steel Vengeance as far as my opinion on its uh, effectiveness, if you will, uh, as a number one coaster, because it hasn't actually been my number one yet. I'm gonna give it a fair shot. The decor looks absolutely stunning at this time which is why it's also a bit of a struggle for me to... cover this while getting to the back of the park. What the priorities are, what they are. It's our sleeping giant. Just come for a visit. Cedar Fair parks have this guy. 
everything is opening up. We actually made it for park open. I'm shocked. Uh, although even though Gatekeeper is running already, it will be an early ride time tomorrow, so definitely not the priority. You know where we're going. We have never done a proper vlog from Cedar Point. Even though there is a vlog from four years back, also during the haunt event, it was so early in the channel, I don't really consider it a part of the vlogs. Magnum is also running in the background. I think we're going to get a lot of rides in today. I don't want to jinx anything, but I just get a feeling. Val Raven is also running. We're getting here at an absolutely stunning time. she is. Really going to be a, a focus of tomorrow's vlog and my former number one. Maybe it will make a resurrection after this trip. Millennium Force. Kind of got goosebumps right now, I'm not going to lie. It's been a long time since I've been on these rides. Well, Millennium Force is a walk-on, so we gotta do what we gotta do. We're gonna put the bag away. I'm gonna rejoin you in a bit after a couple of rides, and we'll capture the launch of this fantastic day, potentially here at Cedar Point, after I've been on this ride. I'm already contradicting myself, but it's right here waiting. I gotta go on it. We are walking on to Millennium Force, people. empty queue. Miraculous. I don't know what time that this has ever happened before. I can't think of a time I've been more excited <laughs> than, say, maybe the first time I've ridden this ride. Because, uh, yeah, I've never walked on it in probably my lifetime. Here we go. Just watched a fantastic video with El Toro Ryan on the operations of this particular ride. Let's get on it. Okay, so just got off of Millennium Force. I figure I gotta get my first impressions. Third from the back. That blew my mind. I don't know if, what it was about the last ride that I had on this ride that kind of left me a little bit uh, underwhelmed, but that basically just kicked it right back up into the top tier again. Just relentless force. I feel like the force actually on the, um, every single turn, especially at the low to the ground ones, were quite intense and forceful. Um, I don't know. I'm going to give you another review because I'm going to go around and just go on the front because you're probably not going to find another time that it's a, short, a shorter wait to get on the front of Millennium Force. Three train operations at a pretty empty park, which means plenty of opportunities. Waste pack or cargo pocket must be left in a locker. Failure to complete 
supply may result in ejection from the park. As a reminder, Cedar Point is not... And now time for a love letter to Millennium Force. How I have forsaken thee. How I misjudged you. I don't know what happened between us, but that is in the past. Because I'm talking about today. And what an incredible ride that was in the front. Whew, I'm blown away. Here I am, I'm wasting my time here. Continuing to get this beautiful vis of Millennium Force while getting the, these rides in. So that's a front and a back in less than uh, 10 minutes time. And it's gonna be on ERT in the morning tomorrow. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get a lot of rides in on this ride. Um, but that being said, we're gonna follow the uh, lead of these guys here. Whew, it's just so beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, overall reviews, except for like that ejector in the front seat on the high speed airtime hill, probably one of the best uh, airtime moments in the world without question. The rest of the ride, just the way it carries that speed throughout the course, second to none. It's running beautifully. It's not janky at all. I honestly feel like it's just as smooth as it was in its opening year when I rode it for the first time. Unbelievable ride. But we gotta get on to our main reason why we're here. Well, that will come actually a little bit later because the haunts aren't actually open yet. And I don't believe that's gonna start until 7 p.m. They are getting all ready. We're gonna try to get on Maverick and Steel Vengeance before the festivities begin. Rougarou wasn't going around earlier, but it is now, which is nice to see. We have some amazing scenery here. I really like how this place is decked out this year. In fact, there's an entire scare zone or maze built into the newest section of the park, which is just up over here. We're going to capture as much of this atmosphere as I can, though, because it's quite Amazing. I missed most of these haunts the last time I was here since I was here so early in the day and left. Uh, in fact, the park was only open till 8 at that time, but today we're definitely going to get our money's worth and get them all in. Days like today that I am reminded of why this park is held in such high regard. Opposed to the last time that I was here, when these attractions were open uh, in the middle of the day on a Sunday, including this Cornstalkers, which had a really long line actually the last time I was here, so I didn't even get to experience that. 
I only did two mazes as I mentioned last time. But because there's so few people here and the mazes don't even open until 8, you can get the majority of your ride time in early. Just getting some beauty shots of these coasters before it's too late, but the mood is already starting to be set.
here. The sun has just gone down. I could do a couple re-rides, but the lines are starting to form for the houses. Uh, and it's starting to kick up a bit here. I've got two rides, basically a walk on on Steel Vengeance behind me, and two rides on Millennium. So, so far I'd say in an hour and a half, that is astronomically good. But besides the point, we're gonna now, because it is the time to explore the atmosphere as the park is taken over into darkness. There are already lines forming for this particular Palace Theater show. 6.30, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and a show at 11. So we might try to get into that later on. We tried to get on to Maverick, but unfortunately the line is now about a half an hour, so I'm gonna save that for later on tonight. And I am here tomorrow as well, so it'll probably be an early priority tomorrow. Now that I got all those Millennium rides in, and I'll no doubt get a couple more in at the end of the day. So I'm going to prioritize more rides at the end of the day and let the haunt take over for this portion of the vlog. It's going to be an epic one, no doubt. We enter Harvest Fear. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. Harvest Fear has yet to have any fears populated. But I'm sure that's going to change. I apologize if you don't like this voice of mine. I don't know. I just happen to turn it on this time of year. Loving this themed Cedar Creek mine ride. We will no doubt be back here later. Really because of the time, and because of how many people are here, we get a full walkthrough of the event before it starts. back around to the front of the park we do encounter a couple of unfortunate situations on this side one of the left which is mild which is Gemini which is unfortunately not running for this event and I didn't even get a ride on last time I was here due to technical issues but I've of course been on this before naturally most of the children's area is also not available including accredited Camp Snoopy that I, has avoided me for some time that one day I will probably get. <laughs> but it leads us to the obvious topic of discussion. This legendary ride, which at the last time of me being here, was the last ride that I rode. Little did I know that this time, four years later, it would not be open and never be open again in the form of which I wrote it. What of the future of this ride? Something that we'll be talking about for some time until it's officially announced. For those of you that do not know, 
Top Thrill Dragster had an incident in 2018 of which required the ride to close. A piece of the ride's train fell off of the vehicle and onto a guest, severely injuring them. We have a legendary ride before behind me that's just beautiful and tempting me to ride. Of course, I will take a more in-depth look at it tomorrow when it's daylight. We can actually have a look at the grounds and follow any progress of what's changing to Top Thrill Dragster because we still don't know quite what's happening. In fact, the park is keeping us in the dark on purpose. I feel because they, they know what anticipation us enthusiasts have for what could be the newest incarnation of this ride. But for now, it sits idle awaiting its fate. I wish I had covered more, 
I'm clearly out of breath because I had to run all the way back to the back of the park to retrieve my camera. But we're here now. So what I'm going to do is that we're just going to roll and let you enjoy a lot of the sights and sounds of this haunt. A lot of the scare actors have been out. I've had great interactions with all of them. Sadly not covered as obviously I've been doing what I do best, which is enjoying the rides here at Cedar Point. It's been so long since I've been able to enjoy walk-ons to things like Steel Vengeance, which I've done four times today. Maverick in the dark. Val Raven in the dark. Magnum twice in the dark. It's really been astounding. The only thing that's not going to happen is Millennium in the dark, unfortunately. I did do it last time here. But we're going to go down into the scare zone, give you a little bit of the atmosphere of the main area, and then head back out, and then I'll give you my wrap-up of the day, because I've already got my final rides in for today. Alright, here we go, guys. A final walkthrough. Warning, nightmares ahead. You just tried to stop me, but I just got here just in time. We got one final hunt. sinister shot I've ever seen I don't know we better get out of here we're not invited corn stalkers is right over here and I will tell you right now I've done the Kings Island version and now I finally have done this version and I will say it was probably the best one Kings Islands is excellent but unfortunately that one might take its cake I'd love to go and show you Western Town, which is north here, but I'm afraid that most of the actors have left. So because of that, we're gonna head back out this way. Now we did cover all the scare zones, technically, so I apologize for not having any in-depth analysis other than the ones that I'm going to discuss on the way out. This millennium goes around. Ooh, I'd love to have one more ride, but I believe that we can get to the carnival tent in time For our final ride today Circus is. It's that way. No. The circus. That, that way. way. That way. Gotta run. Gotta run. Gotta run. Gotta run. We're gonna go to the circus. All right, and that is it. That is a wrap here from Halloween Haunt. 2022 here at Cedar Point. I just finished the carnival, the freak show really is what it's called, which for some reason I don't know whether or not I did it last time I was here. I don't believe I did. In fact, I didn't do it, but it seems somewhat familiar as it would for any of you that have done those kinds of events before or haunts. Circus themed horror. We did cover some of the scare zones, which I actually went through Earlier, I went through this scare zone and also the final one, which is on the opposite side of where Magnum is. 
I would have loved to have gotten a shot of Magnum at night there going up the lift hill. It was quite a stunning experience. I'm sure I'm going to cover all of that in the parking lot on the way out. There's a lot to cover. We are actually banished this time as we need leave. It's just past midnight. We're going to make our way back. This is really the only way to go through the park during Haunt. With, with Top Thrill being down, it really just does not have quite an offering on the other side of the park and you really kind of get trapped there for like 10-15 minutes which definitely happened to me tonight. But that doesn't really matter because I definitely covered everything I wanted to and more today. Which I'm very happy about. I do have to get another park map because I lost it on Steel Vengeance on my fourth ride. Even with all the time that we had, I would certainly would have done with a little bit more. Don't forget the poop before you leave! But if you don't poop before you leave, you're gonna regret it! Hey, I didn't give you a You can't really see me, but I'm gonna give you a little talk over while we do go out of the park. Oh, it's so bittersweet leaving here knowing that if it wasn't the haunt that I probably would have gotten way more rides in although I'm not gonna lie three walk-on rides basically on Steel Vengeance who's complaining there Maverick I could have walked back onto but we'll be doing that tomorrow and for any of you that are watching this vlog right now and feel like nothing was represented that you actually wanted to talk about, well, I will be here tomorrow to discuss other rides that I did not cover this evening because there are no haunt events during the day tomorrow. So I will be focusing on just the rides and my impressions tomorrow's, in tomorrow's vlog. But for now, it is just haunt. I'm taking the final atmosphere. The music is gone. It's time to leave. I will say though that um, tomorrow I'm going to be at possibly my favorite haunt event of all time, which is a sister park to Cedar Fair, or Cedar Point, which would be Kings Island. Uh, one of the things I do like about that haunt and compared to this one is that uh, just this particular area, the frontier area, is basically the haunt area, which is well done but it still doesn't have quite the atmosphere that the Kings Island Haunt has. For an event that's been going on for 25 years, it's kind of unusual that it's not quite the same, but it is what it is. It's disappointing that the ghost train is not available anymore. I'm sure that will return at some point in the future. I will say there were a couple of mazes I was super impressed with, and a couple that was like, ah, they're all right, really. Uh, generally anything that had been here for a while was decent. A couple of the other ones that have been here new-ish, newer introductions. I may cover it in tomorrow's vlog just to give you an idea where it's actually located, but Bloodbath, which is where Steel Vengeance is, or in Steel Vengeance's courtyard, if I was to give one of the mazes a pass, it would probably be that one, considering the amount of time that it took to get into it and no real decent scares. And while it was an interesting kind of concept of like a nightclub uh, kind of taken over by I don't really know what, uh, Bush Gardens did a way better job of that at their Hollow Scream last year in that really famous haunt that has been reintroduced this year uh, which is outstanding compared to 
what this one's offering. So I would probably skip that if you don't have the time. Uh, the other four are definitely worth the time though. Uh, that being said, Slaughterhouse has not changed in four years. So I really probably, again, if you don't have the time, I would skip that one as well. I don't know what it is about Haunt, but it really kind of draws into perspective of how big this park actually is. Whenever I'm not here, I seem to think that it's not big. And then I come here and I'm trying to run from one side to the other. Because of the fact that it's cyclical as far as how you go around the park, you kind of get trapped on one side and then, oh, lo and behold, you can't get to the other and you want to get to a ride while you know it has a short line. Anyhow, it's been an adventure today, but really the best possible adventure in the sense that in six hours time I'll say this right now. If you want to come to Halloween weekends, you probably want to come on a Thursday early in the season as I've done today It's really infamous at least for myself about the last vlog that I did from here where I didn't actually even get into the park I turned the car around on the causeway because it was that infamous weekend where they actually had to close the gates because there was too many people coming here. Wow, Cedar Point has made good on that unfortunate incident from four years ago with this event. Understandably, we're coming out of lockdown from last year and the year before, and things are just getting back up into shape. But what an amazing event. Uh, four excellent mazes. One kind of like, mm, I'll give a little review of some of them. Uh, as I said, I wasn't a big fan of Bloodbath, the nightclub uh, inspired one. However, we're about to go by the, one of the newest haunts, which is the, uh, I believe it's the, uh, the Lake Erie Estate. We're gonna have a quick look, but it's in a building that I never even knew existed on this property, just tucked away on the side of the main kind of carousel midway. And boy, what an impressive maze it was. In fact, it's right in front of us here in this old, I believe, administrative building. Yes, one of two new haunts here. It's called the Lake Erie Estate, which is in uh, one of these admin buildings just behind me here, which I'll give you a shot of. Unfortunately, it's not going to be lit up the same way as it was uh, for the actual haunt itself. Although that being said, there wasn't really much to it. It was just kind of hanging out in the corner there, and it's a rather dark building that you can see here. I will try to capture this tomorrow morning. As I said, I'll have a little bit more time to talk about these haunts and stuff. But that is the entrance. But it was a very impressive haunt. In fact, I would say it was probably my favorite of the entire day. Slaughterhouse was decent, but I experienced it before. Freak Show was decent but it was kind of like a spin on the same sort of idea. And I've seen uh, better executed versions of that idea. Cornstalkers was amazing. Doesn't really count as a maze, but it should, because it is a maze. It was one of the more impressive ones here. Um, Havoc, it's sort of like the, or I want to call it Havoc, but it wasn't called Havoc, it was maybe Voodoo. I'm going to get another map on the way out and make sure I get these names right because uh, it wasn't really that great. It was a witch themed uh, maze over by Gatekeeper that's been around for some time. It was alright. It wasn't great, I will admit. Um, and that's the mazes. So you had one outstanding one, which is the new one. Uh, two of them are technically new because uh, Bloodbath is, I believe, another new haunt. But I wasn't really impressed by it. Any stretch of imagination. I'll be having to hit up some merch because last time I was here, I also did not get merch. So I was busy vlogging on the way out and yabbering away. And I didn't get anything. And there is a lot of interesting merches here. Uh, also, these decorations and that, I do believe they're still kind of getting things up to speed because a lot of the lights weren't on. 
see these gravestones, and I noticed the maintenance guys going around and sort of turning them on, and getting everything up to speed. <laughs> Not today. I'm gonna go eat first, my friend. We'll see you next year. Ride reviews. I'm probably gonna save some of the big ones till tomorrow to recap as they kind of creep back into my top 10 of all time. Steel Vengeance. Um, Maverick was great. Uh, what else did I ride with Gatekeeper? I don't know what it is about these B&M wing coasters, but I just don't like them that much. I just don't find them that thrilling. It was an enjoyable ride. I'd say it's probably my favorite wing coaster by B&M. It's just no Asian Ica, is it? There's nothing like Asian Ica. <sighs> There's nothing like Asian Ica. Not even Steel Vengeance can hit what that ride is. So that's a little hint about, you know, a best of coming later in this year. Uh, Magnum, incredible ride in the back seat uh, for my first ride tonight. The second ride was in the front on a non-wheel seat. A little bit more janky and not as exciting as that back seat ride. The ejector on that back seat on the return, it's legendary in that tunnel with all the lighting effects. It just blows everything out of the water. What an amazing ride that they just keep improving upon year upon year. May it never leave us. It is one of the best arrows ever, if not the best arrow ever. At least non-looping arrow. What else did I ride? I rode so many things, I can't even recap them all. Uh, I did Blue Streak, which was excellent. A little bit rough. Uh, I did Val Raven, really rough before that Raven turn, but in the final, uh, before the final inversion. Uh, yeah, it was good, but I did find it a bit rough. Had a front seat ride. It's pretty decent nonetheless. And then finally Maverick, which I'll probably cover as well later on tomorrow. I did do other rides today, but as I said, three hours of constant riding, and I didn't even do one of my favorite Cedar Point rides of all time. Poor Raptor did not get represented today. Alright guys, well that is it from Cedar Point Halloween Weekends 2022. What an incredible experience and possibly one of the best times I've ever had at this park, ever. I've been coming here for almost 30 years now and I cannot think of a better experience in a six hour period. Yes, that is predicated by the fact that the crowds were so low, but this is one of the most popular parks in the world for coaster enthusiasts. So when you get that rare opportunity to come here and to basically walk on some of the most legendary rides in the world, well, you really can't complain about that now, can you? Um, I don't really have many reviews to, to share other than what I've already covered in regards to what was good and what was effective, Steel Vengeance. I'm going to be controversial and talk about it tomorrow because I don't think it's a number one roller coaster for me. Um, there's just something about it that I don't know what it is. I just feel underwhelmed or a little bit bored by the second half of the ride. Yes, it's unrelenting, but Twisted Timbers, for example, um, uh, is it Twisted Timbers or Mystic Timbers? I always get them wrong. For those of you that are fans of the channel at King's Dominion, I don't know. I think I found that ride to be even more enjoyable than, say, Steel Vengeance in some retrospect. Uh, that being said, Steel Vengeance is like just that ride on steroids, so it is a fantastic roller coaster, don't get me wrong. I just feel, in regards to some of the other ones out there, it may not be number one. That being said, it's still a fantastic ride, and I'll 
touch more on that tomorrow when I have more time to discuss some of the rides here and the developments in the park for the future. But for now, thanks for watching guys. It's been an amazing vlog and an amazing day at Cedar Point. I'm sorry I didn't get to cover as much as I possibly could have because uh, yeah, I just had so much fun enjoying the mazes. Uh, I think I covered everything. And if I feel like I missed out on any of the uh, scare zones, for example, um, for the most part, I'd say the scare zones weren't really that much to take in other than corn stalkers. Um, Blood on the Bayou was kind of annoying because you had to go into that mill Millennium Force Courtyard area. It took the better part of five minutes just to get into that area and then to get out. Um, so the scare zones, uh, there was also a uh, shipwreck theme one, which was good. But uh, yeah, I may cover that more in depth tomorrow when I have time to walk around and maybe show you the entrances to those particular attractions as I unfortunately didn't do today. All right guys, thanks for watching. It's been an incredible event. Make sure to get yourself down here for Halloween weekends. What else are you gonna be doing during Halloween, right? Always enjoy.